Welcome to today's Coronavirus Cinema Collection. I'm Gail Rubin, the Doyen of Death, with film recommendations for hunkering down at home. These films can help us be entertained while also educating about planning ahead for end-of-life issues. Today, we are looking at The Viking Funeral on Film. Some people think that a Viking funeral would be an awesome way to set off a beloved loved one to the great beyond. This usually involves boats and flaming arrows. Mills, tell him about the Viking ceremony. Oh yes, the Vikings used to put the carcass on a boat and light it ablaze as it was cast out to sea. That's exactly what I wanted, something dramatic. But guess what? This is all a contrivance from Hollywood history. Let's look at a couple of the films that originated this whole Viking funeral concept. Beau Geste was a 1939 film starring Gary Cooper, Ray Milland, and Robert Preston. They play three brothers who join the French Foreign Legion. The idea of a flaming boat is started in a flashback to childhood. The three brothers, Bo, John, and Digby, are playing with toy boats. John gets injured when a toy cannon shoots a small projectile into his leg, and Isabella, the love of his life, uh, winds up taking it out of his leg. Bo, played by a very young Donald O'Connor, says John will be knighted and given a Viking's funeral. So they set up the boat to have a little figure on a box of matches. Bo says, wait, we need to have a dog. A proper Viking funeral has a dog at your feet. So they get a toy dog from the house. And as they watch the boat go up in flames, Bo says he'd like a Viking funeral with a dog at his feet. This idea of being set ablaze with a dog at your feet comes into play later in the film. The flaming boat concept really reaches its fulfillment in The Vikings. The Vikings starred Tony Curtis and Kirk Douglas as Viking half-brothers who fight it out throughout the film, even up to the very end, when they have a duel to the death. Douglas is killed, and Tony Curtis intones, prepare a funeral for a Viking.
it's this version of the Viking funeral that has become enshrined in the popular consciousness so that when someone says they want a Viking funeral, this is what they're thinking of. This vision of a Viking funeral has been carried on in many other films going forward. The 1988 film Rocket Gibraltar is another example of this ideal of the Viking funeral. Burt Lancaster stars as the patriarch of a large dysfunctional family. The families come together at his beach house to celebrate Grandpa's 70th birthday. The grandkids, all eight of them, ask Grandpa, what do you want for your 70th birthday? First he says, peace on earth. Then he says, oh, no ties, no socks. I want a Viking funeral. And he sits them down on the beach and he tells them the story of what a Viking funeral looks like as per what actually took place in the 1958 film, The Vikings. The kids are inspired. They find a rowboat, and the rowboat is named Rocket Gibraltar. They rig it up with a striped sail and put a little driftwood on the bow and make it the boat that they will give their grandfather his Viking funeral in. Well, Grandpa just very conveniently dies in his sleep while taking a nap on his 70th birthday. The kids smuggle Grandpa out of the house to the boat and pull it out into the water. Meanwhile, the adults are finally catching on that what happened to the kids and Grandpa. There's a mad dash to the ocean. They find that the boat is in the water, it's on fire, and the kids are all watching it. Does anybody get disciplined? No, but this is Hollywood. So. Grandpa does get his Hollywood Viking funeral at the end of Rocket Gibraltar. Eulogy is a 2004 comedy with another dysfunctional family that actually has competition. Grandpa, who dies, actually had two other families in two other states that he was going and visiting. Grandpa was quite the character and did want a Viking funeral. In this film, let's take a look at how his twin grandsons put together their version of the Viking flaming funeral. Is it too much to ask that we bury my grandfather with a little honor and dignity? I think it is, sweetie, really, yeah. Look at, he clocked him all the way from the grave. All this time, thought you were his favorite. Well, I mean, you were his favorite one of us. We could have been his second favorite family. I left something in the, um... We could have been his third. Congratulations on a thousand bucks. Thanks. What makes you think they know what they're doing? This is actually the kind of stuff they're good at. Oh, great. Dead. Lighter. Be careful, guys. I love this lighter. We don't have a bagpipe player. We know the words. How many laws do you suppose we're breaking here? Yeah, I should be preparing a defense. Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. And when he died, oh, he left. In addition 
to these films, you'll see this Viking funeral on the water in the 2007 film The Living Wake, a short film made in 2008 called Carpet Kingdom. There's also First Night, which stars Sean Connery as King Arthur, who dies at the end and, yes, gets another Viking funeral on the water send-off. But here's the truth about Viking funerals. They were not conducted on water. A Viking who had a boat would actually be buried or cremated on his boat on land. If it was cremated, it was pulled out of the water, surrounded by firewood, and that Viking was set ablaze along with goodies to accompany him to the afterlife. So whenever you see a movie with a Viking boat being set ablaze by blazing arrows on the water, just know that that version of Viking funeral history is out to sea. You'll find Amazon links to most of these films in the description below if you want to check them out. If you've got other Viking funeral film recommendations, do give a comment. And if you would like to hear more about coronavirus cinema film recommendations, please like this channel, give this video a thumbs up. By the way, I do virtual presentations with film clips. I do have a license. We will not be fined $250,000 or thrown into jail for five years. If you'd like to talk, get in touch. I'm Gail Rubin, the doyen of death, reminding you to wash your hands. And remember, just like talking about sex won't make you pregnant, talking about funerals and end-of-life issues won't make you dead. Start a conversation today.